One of the laptops on this table is a MacBook Air M3, the other one's an M2, which looks exactly identical. Let's see how they perform against each other when we take a look at this from a pro photographer perspective. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. That introduction will serve as the form factor review. As usual, there'll be lots of information. Please pause the video so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis I'll be sharing with you. Please subscribe and like on this video. This way, YouTube algorithm will push this video to an even larger audience. When it comes to these Mac testing, they are pretty much self-funded. If you find this information helpful, I'll leave a link to my tip jar in the description. YouTube super thanks works as well. And something new I'm trying out as a membership to this channel. But regardless of what you do, I appreciate you coming with me on this journey. Now, when it comes to the MacBook Air, I will say that I love the form factor. I love the size. I love the weight. However, one thing to really keep in mind as well when it comes to Creative Pro workflow is that these machines are passive heat dissipation, meaning that there are no fans. So if you're doing long rendering with a lot of raw files, you're rendering a lot of videos out, the performance is definitely going to take a hit and you're going to see them in the chart that I'm about to share with you. Now let's take a look at many of our test system. For this, we'll start out with the M3 MacBook Air. And the configuration I choose is pretty much the standard one, 8 CPU, 10 GPU. The one that I choose is 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabyte SSD. And this is going to be the main configuration that I'm going to test for these consumer oriented MSOC going forward. Don't get me wrong, you can use these for pro workflow, but there are better tools out there in Apple Arsenal that you can really pick that's going to be more akin to real pro creative workflow. Now, this also happens to be the stock configuration, which I am really happy to see. If you're wondering how the performance of the 13 and 15 inch model is going to be, they're going to be very identical to each other within the margin of error. So if you're looking at a 15 inch model, I would just take a look at how this 13 inch perform. That's going to give you a good idea for how that's going to perform as well. Now, the other thing is that when it comes to all the MacBook Air in this cycle, M1, M2, including M3, I have retested all of those. But for the other machines in the lineup, for example, the MacBook Pro with the regular M ship, the MacBook Pro with M, the Pro ship, and also the Max and Ultra, I picked a few of those machines out and run some reference testing, meaning that I retest everything and compare the numbers to the previous testing cycle that I've done. That means previous dot release of Sonoma and the software. And from what I can tell you right now, the numbers are very identical to each other. In fact, it ran a little bit slower this time around on some of the tests, but not so much so that, you know, it is significant. So for that, all the testing results from the other machines you're going to see are going to be previous testing result. But anything with the air on the system you're seeing right now, these are going to be brand new testing result. So for this, we have the M1, M2, and also two M2 machines. The variation between these two are going to be the memory and also the SSD size in the M2. When it comes to the M1, 16 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte SSD, that's pretty much the standard configuration and all these machines are a custom built one. We're also going to throw in the result from the MacBook Pro, M1, M2, and M3 as well. This way you get a chance to see what happens if you're using the same exact SOC, but now give the machine active cooling on the system. You're going to see the numbers does go down a little bit when it comes to performance. And this is something that I definitely want you to consider if you are a Creative Pro. You can see the machine configuration there. These are the Pro SOCs that we're going to be testing in this lineup. So you can take a look at those numbers. Most of these are going to be stock configuration. And here are the Max SOC. And lastly, we'll throw in result from two of the Ultra as well, M1 Ultra and also M2 Ultra in the lineup. So. For my testing, if you've been following the channel, you know that I do single app, single silicon testing because what I really want to see is how the silicon is reforming one generation to the next from one laptop to the next. I know we all multitask, but what I really want to know is how the ship is performing. And that is important to me. And the other thing too, I'm going to tell you is that if you do multitasking, definitely configure your system with more memory. For the test configuration, you know, what it really comes down to, I said this in other videos as well, I can't test everything, so we're gonna have to do some data extrapolation. But the two M2 configuration I'm sharing with you, it's going to give us a lot of good insight into pretty much how this generation is going to perform as well. The effect of SSD speed and also the RAM is pretty much known at this point. So we can really go in there and pinpoint like, this is going to be faster because it has more RAM, or this task is going to be faster because the SSD is faster on the system. And I'll point these out as we get to those charts as well. Now, if you're looking for 
the priority list to upgrade your machine, these are as follows. And there'll be more information about this at the end of the video as well. So the first thing you wanna do is look into getting more memory in your system because that's definitely going to help out. The secondary thing you wanna take a looking at is expanding the SSD. And thirdly, this is where you will look into upgrading the SOC. For example, going with the one that has more CPU or GPU cores, but most of the time, you're spending a lot of money on this third upgrade, the SOC itself, but you're not really seeing as much of a performance variation as upgrading the RAM or the SSD in the system itself. Remember, when it comes to Apple SOC, we have to remember that these regular M chip are more consumer oriented chip, and there are more pro oriented ones. Those are the one with the pro, the max, the ultra chip. Those are gonna give a much better performance and also bang for the buck, especially if you don't wanna wait very long for a task to finish. One thing that I said before in many of the other videos as well is that many of these applications we're using are not fully optimized for these M silicon just yet. So it's really just using a lot of brute force to really just utilizing the power of the ship to really run through the process. And that's something very interesting to see that even though we're in the third generation already, optimization haven't really come as much as I like to see yet. Initial impression for the M3 Air is as follows. It's okay. And you're going to see the result and see why I say that in just a moment. I was expecting more out of this, but we're really not quite getting it right now, especially with the current software that is available on the market at this point in time. Here's how you're going to read the spec for this machine and all these other abbreviations, so you can definitely check them out. And let's talk about a few things first. SSD. SSD can be expandable with external storage. However, internally, those are pretty much fixed. So configure the SSD size based on what you're going to need. Here's the SSD speed for the machine. As we found out on the M2 generation Air, Apple have gone in and put one chip in for the NAND chip. This is why we are seeing a low performance. On this time around with the M3 Air generation, if you configure it at 256, it's now going to be in the 3000 range because Apple have gone back to two 128 gigabyte NAND chips again, which is something that's really great to see and it's going to alleviate the conversation point of like, should you upgrade this, should you upgrade that? Well, now if you go with that configuration, you're gonna be okay as well, but I still recommend upgrading the memory. So these are pretty much the result, the M3, you can see the performance, it's pretty much in line with the rest of the other machine for the 512 gigabyte. That's what we can expect. Here's the speed for the other machines in the lineup. Feel free to pause this, you can just take a look at the result a little bit closer. And when it comes to the SSD speed, I already made a video talking about this, link will be in the description. Pretty much you don't need the fastest SSD possible and I've also proved this in multiple export results well that, you know, they're pretty much identical to each other. With this being said, the best thing you can do when it comes to SSD is configure for the size you're gonna need and don't worry so much about the speed of it. All right, when it comes to RAM in the system, remember that these are pretty much fixed and worse than the SSD, you cannot go and expand this. You cannot plug in extra RAM into the system. So you need to consider your option very carefully when you configure the machine because the only way to upgrade this is to pretty much buy another machine. All right, with this said, the best thing that you can do if you're a current Mac owner Literally, restart your machine, launch activity monitor, go into memory, take a look at the memory pressure as you start to go throughout the day on your workflow. I would tile your windows in a way that you can see the memory pressure and see how much you're using right now based on the number of amount of memory that you have. If it's in the yellow or red, that means you probably need more. If it's green all the time, you're probably good to go with just the amount of memory you have on the system at the moment. Now, personally for me, I prefer to use iStat Menu. Links to this will be in the description. I get no commission from them, but I use this program all the time because they also keep the history of your usage for 30 days as well. And I find this a useful metrics to really gauge the usage of the machine. So the minimum that I recommend for Creative Pro is to use 16 gigabytes of memory. And this is also the minimum testing for these consumer oriented SOC going forward as well, as I have mentioned in previous test videos. All the testing that I've done on these machines, especially with the Air, are gonna be on Sonoma 14.4. So these are pretty much the latest operating system. And as I already mentioned briefly, I have also been noticing a slowdown trend in these machines as well. So same machine, doing the exact same test, using a newer operating system, newer version of the software, it has a tendency to run slower over time. Not something that I really like to see, but it's something that I have noted. I might make a video about this in the future. You know, do comments in the section below if you wanna see this. Let's jump right in and take a look at the result from Lightroom Classic 13.2. All the computers support full acceleration. For this, 
The M3 Air is performing third on the list. Interestingly enough, the M1 with 16 gigabyte and one terabyte SSD is performing really well in this task. Now, this is rendering one-to-one -one preview for 1000 Nikon D850 file, and this is a CPU-based task. Interesting enough, there is time variation of a little bit over 30 seconds between the fastest and where the M3 Air is. I would probably say that these are all within the margin of error of each other, but it definitely is something to note. So what happens when we add in the machine with active cooling? This would be, for example, the MacBook Pro using the exact same SOC in the inside. Interestingly enough, the air is here, but the 14 inch MacBook Pro M3 is performing about 10 minute faster. This is what happens when we give the machine a fan. Now, the price variation between this M3 Air versus this 14 inch MacBook Pro with this updated configuration is about $300. And I would argue that this is a money well spent if you are a Creative Pro because you have a faster machine with active cooling and also a machine that has a better screen as well, which is also XDR display, meaning LED. So this is definitely something to consider. Here's how the MacBook Air M3 compares to the other machine in a lineup you can see in the chart. Now, the machines down here are generally going to be in, I would probably say, the $800 to $1,500 range. These are going to be the range down here. When it, you get up to the very top, you're looking at about four to $5,000 and everything else in between as well. So when you really take a look at this for your workflow, consider the numbers in between as well because many of those can give you a really great value. Now let's take a look at 1000 file export for Nikon D850. The M3 did definitely pull ahead on this one, and I would argue by a significant margin as well. This is because the new GPU in the system is actually faster, and also this GPU can do memory load balancing much differently than what it can in the previous M1 and also M2 machine, which is contributing a lot to this time improvement you're gonna see. Now, interestingly enough, the other two M2 are pretty much identical to each other, and the M1 is falling behind previous GPU technologies and also two less GPU core as well. What happened when we add in the active cooling machine? Well, 14 inch MacBook Pro M3 in a custom order configuration is pulling ahead. And again, by 10 minutes for $300. Day in day out workflow, this is totally worth it. You can see the other machine testing we saw in the chart as well, but any of the active cooling machines are going to pull ahead of any of the air ones. Now, let's take a look at the result of this compared with all the other machines in the lineup. You get an idea for the performance of the M3 Air right now. Let's take a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge. And for this, the result you see right now, it's coming up at the very top. This is a CPU-based task, but the CPU in this generation, the clock speed and frequency have also increased as well, and we're seeing more efficiency from it, which is the reason why we're gaining that slight few seconds improvement in time. Now, when we compare this to the active machine in the lineup, or all the other machine for that matter, you can see a few trends coming up right there. Anything with the M3 is jumping at the top. Anything else with the M2, and also M1, regardless of variation, is really going down in the list. And this is because this task really go in and use CPU only. All right, now let's take a look at Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge. So for this, interestingly enough, there is a lot of errors in this result. And I'm gonna point this out right now because the timing for all of these machines are much greater than the previous testing that I've done. And after so many tests, restarting the machine, launching the catalog again, launching Lightroom again, we're still coming up with a time that's six minutes. This is not what we're expecting to see at all, especially when I show you the chart, when we add in all the other machines in a lineup. In general, I would expect the performance to be somewhere in here, but we're really not getting that at all this time around. So there is a bug going on with Lightroom Classic, Panorama Merge in these particular combination with the OS and also the Lightroom version itself. All right, AI noise reduction for Lightroom Classic. This is still a task that uses GPU because they have not gone in and used it NPU yet. For one single picture, this is pretty much the timing between the two. Now, interesting enough, the M2 with 24 gigabytes and 512 is pulling slightly ahead, but only by two seconds. This is what I would call they are within a margin of error. So they're so close to each other that I wouldn't worry about it much, but you see how the other machines are pretty much spreading apart. Here it is when we add in machine with the active cooling. Interestingly enough, the MacBook Air M2 is still, you know, 
pulling ahead, but all of these three machines you see right now, or even including this one as well, the MacBook Pro M2, all of these are within just a few seconds apart, margin of error, but you start to see that the M1 is really not catching up too well anymore. And here's the result with the rest of the other machines in the lineup. This will give you an idea as to how it is really performing on AI noise reduction using GPU. But there's one new test I'm doing, and for this, I'm including 10 pictures. Now, this is a mixture between Nikon D810, D850, and also Sony A7R5, and we're doing noise reduction on all of these. So here is the result when we run 10 files in. And because this test is so new, I haven't run it on the all the other machines yet, but you're going to see the result from all the errors. And you can see right now that the M3 error, it's not really performing too bad at all, but when you really take an M2, for instance, 24 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabyte FSD, it is performing better. So this is a task that not only utilizes the GPU, even though it says GPU only here, but it also goes in and uses the RAM a little bit on the system as well to run all these computation. And having more in the system is definitely benefiting the performance overall. Now, now, I also throw in a result from the M2 Ultra as well, and it was able to accomplish these 10 noise reduction using GPU in two minutes and 21 seconds. This gives you a perspective right away in terms of performance between the air and also the top end desktop. And in the future tests, I'll be you know adding more machines into this lineup too. All right, Lightroom. This is the cloud desktop version, version 7.2. All of them support full acceleration. And this is the program that when you really go in and export, it utilizes CPU, GPU, and RAM all in combination with each other. Interestingly enough, the M2 with more memory is really performing slightly better by close to 19 seconds. So those are definitely something to think about when you're looking at these machine right now. I would argue after seeing these results that if you can find a previous generation with 24 gigabytes of memory and at least 512 gigabyte SSD, and if you can find either in the refurbish, use or clearance section, that's going to give you a much better value than this stock machine right now. Just something to think about. Here it is when we add in machine with active cooling in. So these are the two active cooling machines as I'm pointing out, and the M1 is trailing behind just a little bit, taking about 30 seconds longer to do the export here, but still holding its own just fine with the rest of the machine in the lineup. But this gives you some perspectives right there, and the 14 inch MacBook Pro is pulling out ahead by close to seven minutes. Remember, this is $300 and is definitely $300 well spent if this is your day in day out workflow. Here it is when you compare with all the inner machines in the lineup. And now let's take a look at Capture One, 16.3.7.10. If they could only put more dots there, it would be very interesting. All right, import. Now I've set the preview to large, 5120. This way is consistent with the previous test that I've done. And you can see right now that, yeah, the CPU is definitely faster in the M3, which is the reason why it is pulling ahead against the M2 with 24 gigabytes of memory. M1 and also M2 in the other configuration as well. Now let's go in and add machine with active cooling in. Well, when we add active cooling in here, we are now saving around a little bit over two minutes, two and a half minutes of time when we get this one. It's $300. If you're running Capture One only, may not be the most worthwhile thing, but let's see how the export's gonna do in just a moment. Now, when we add this to all the computer in a lineup, you can see where the performance is on this chart right there. Let's take a look at export. It's really pulling out ahead. But because, as I mentioned, these are consumer oriented SOCs, they're taking in the range of 40 minutes or close to an hour to accomplish this task. You can see that the M3 is pulling ahead of all the previous air generation as it should, and by a little bit over five minutes, close to six actually, which is something really neat to see. However, let's see how this machine really performs when we compare this to the machine with active cooling, the MacBook Pro. So 14 inch MacBook Pro M3 is only faster by about three minutes. And when we take a look at the MacBook Pro M2, all very similar specs as you can see right now, it's less than 40 seconds faster. So something interesting there, but as I mentioned before, Capture One does not really go in and utilize the GPU resource on the system well at all. In fact, it runs really poorly on many of the systems, especially when you take a look at the way how it performs for all the computer in this chart. We have really modern machines right now. For instance, the M1 Ultra, M2 Ultra, 
but it's really not that much faster than the M3 Max or the M2 Max. And, you know, even though these machines have double, in many instances, the amount of GPU that are on these other machines. So very interesting to see there how Capture One is utilizing this, but something to keep in mind as well. Now let's take a look at Photoshop. For this, I am still using Digital Lloyd Lloyd Chamber Tests, and I'll leave a link to his website in the description. These are the testing that I have done. And when it comes to Photoshop speed, the M3 Air is definitely pulling ahead. Interestingly enough, the result numbers you see here, four seconds something, these are the result numbers that if you've gone to my videos that I released in the past year, the past two years, these are the numbers we're getting on the inner machines. Yet on the current operating system and the current version of Photoshop, we're now increasing by close to two second time span. Something to really think about there. So here it is where the M3 areas with 90% memory utilization on these machines, how it compares to the rest in the lineup. Interestingly enough, the air is still performing at the top of the chart, but that is because it has the M3 ship on the inside. And this Photoshop speed test is just going in and utilizing the CPU on the system. And it's really not saturating all the cores on the system. So it doesn't generate that much heat, which is the reason why you're seeing this good timing you're seeing right now. Let's quickly take a look at the SSD speed before we look at the rest of the result. A few things to note is that we have a machine with 24 gigabytes model in the lineup. The M3 is at the very top there. And we also have an M1 Air with one terabyte of memory, which is performing a little bit faster than the rest of the machine in terms of write. And also an M2 Air with 256 gigabytes of memory, which is pretty much performing at half of the other one in the chart. How does this perform in Photoshop Medium? 15.7 gigabyte file. Remember, this is already filling up the memory on a 16 gigabyte machine. So Scratch This is definitely being used. And in addition to that, it's also using a lot of RAM and CPU at the same time. So with 70% memory allocation, the Air M3 comes in third. And with 90% memory allocation, Air M3 pretty much comes in second on the list. So you can see the result right there. Now, if you take a look at this, the 256 model with half the speed for SSD is performing slower and is finishing last on the chart. But if you look at this relative, it's just a number. We're only talking about one second to maybe three seconds longer. It's really not that big of a deal if you ask me, but if you want the faster performance, I mean, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to get more memory in the system, especially if you work with a lot of large files and composite. Here it is comparing with the other machine in a lineup, the Air M3 is pretty much in the middle there in this standard configuration. Here it is with Photoshop Huge, 56 gigabytes of memory. This is pretty much going over the memory in the system so many times already. And you can see that the 24 gigabyte model is performing the best, but if we add more RAM into the system, you're going to see that number keeps going down as you're going to see in the next chart. Interestingly enough, the M3 Air with 512 gigabytes is performing third on this list and the M1 Air with one terabyte SSD that's slightly faster is pulling up ahead by close to a minute. Something very interesting to observe there. What I'm going to say is this, if you're working with these large files at a time, configure your machine appropriately. This way you don't have to wait for Photoshop to finish the task. You're going to notice in this chart a few things, the memory and also SSD. And when you add more memory into the system, we're talking about finishing this task up in about 18 seconds. This is even faster than the 64 gigabyte memory machine. So you start to get to see the numbers right there, but you're seeing a huge price variation between all these machines in this chart as well. I would say pick a happy medium that's going to work for your workflow and the size of files that you work with. Now let's take a look at Final Cut Pro encoder decoder engine. When it comes to all these machines, H.264 for the air, exactly the same. That's really great to see. And you will also see another trend as well is that all the consumer oriented SOC tends to cluster pretty much in the same area there. The Pro is slightly faster, but not so much. So that's something to really think about there. Now, if we take a look at HGVC 8-bit, we start to see some slight variation. The M2, M3s are performing better than the M1 generation. And when we compare with this to the rest of the chart, you're also going to notice that the regular consumer oriented SOC and also the one with the pro associate in the name are performing about the same. Part of the reason for this is because they have the same amount of encoder decoder engine. But this is also the reason why I say, if you work a video, get the max or the ultra because it doubles every time you go up in the lineup. So something to think about there. ProRes 422, 
Timing are very similar on these machines. This one, the M3, is performing, you know, a little slightly slower. I did ran that test a few times. It's by about close to 30 seconds or 20 seconds slower or so. But it's, I wouldn't say that is a huge deal when you really take a look at that. Now, if we take a look at this compared with the rest of the chart, I mean, you start to see that the M3 Air is really falling behind. And this is also what I was arguing earlier in this review as well, that the M2 Air with 24 gigabytes and at least 512 gigabytes of memory can be a really great value going forward in the world that we are today. Let's take a look at <clears throat> After Effect using Adobe Benchmark. It's coming up right at the very top with the M2 Air just following behind a little bit less than a minute slower. And when we take a look at the rest of the machine lineup, you can see how the Air is really performed below. But you also do get, for example, the M1 with active cooling performing slightly longer. And also these are the one with active cooling, for example, the 14 inch MacBook Pro one, you can see right there that the result itself is close to around two minutes, a little bit over two minutes faster. So I would definitely look at getting the 14 inch MacBook Pro if you do a lot of these tasks, but you will see how the numbers are really starting to go down when you really go in and increase the resources on the machine. So what does this all mean? If you take a look at the result from the M3 test that I've done, well, there is an expectation and I have a feeling that you're going to be much better off with the previous generation and the performance improvement we're getting with M3 doesn't really quite precipitate across the board as we would expect it with the current creative software that's available on the market today. And the other thing too is that if you are a creative pro, there are better options out there as I'm going to point out in a little bit. So if you're coming into Mac, if you're a new purchaser, you really want to jump in, you want the Air, what's my suggestion? Well, I would probably take a look at the M2 Air. If you can find one with 24 gigabytes of memory and at least 512 gigabytes of SSD, well, you can take a look at the clearance section, either use or refurbish, and I think you're going to get a really great value out of those machines compared to the M3 Air. Now, if you're an upgrader coming from Intel, I would say run, don't walk to get the Apple Silicon version, especially an Intel Air. However, if you're coming from Apple Silicon already, or if you really have the M2 Air right now, just keep it. Unless you need more memory, more SSD, you want to squeeze that extra speed out of it. But speed wise, we're not really seeing that much performance improvement from this air generation overall. Remember the upgrade priorities that I've shared. The first thing you want to do is bump up the memory because per the amount of dollar that you spend, you're going to see the most improvement in performance from there. Secondary is going to be SSD. And thirdly, which I don't recommend doing at all, is to upgrade the SOC. Because on that third one, you're going to be paying quite a bit of money, but the performance improvements are going to be marginal at best. By getting two more GPU cores or one in five more CPU cores, you're not going to see that much of a difference in performance. Upgrading the RAM, you're going to see a much bigger reduction in time that you need to take to do the task. All right, full for thought here. So 13 inch MacBook Air upgrade to 16 gigabytes of memory compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And this is just with the regular M3 SOC, 16 gigabytes of memory. Both of them have 512. You are around $300 apart. I would say this machine with $300 more is a much better machine. You get the XDR display, you get extra ports. For instance, you get the HDMI out on here and you also have the active cooling on the system. So let's say you upgrade to a 15 inch machine instead. Well, now you are within a striking distance of $100 to the machine configuration that I have. Slightly smaller screen by one inch, but you also get a mini LED XDR display. You still get the extra port and active cooling. I would argue that this is a much better machine and a much better value overall. Now, what happened when we compare the one that I have been recommending all this time to an M3 Pro? Because at this configuration, you are now $200 apart from each other. If you can spring that extra 200, this M3 Pro, it's going to be a much better SOC overall. You get extra ports on your system as well. You get active cooling between both of these systems, but you also definitely get more cores in your system that you can utilize in a task, and it does really show. So these are things to think about. Now, app configuration or SOC configuration by the apps, good, better, or best. If you're using Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, good would be any of the Pro. Better would be any of the Macs, and the best would be any of the Ultra machines you can see right there. If you're using Photoshop, the Pro would be good, Macs would be better. But when it comes to the best one, I would say anything with the M3, it's going to perform really well because of the faster CPU that's on the ship. Now, when it comes to Capture One, I always recommend getting the Macs, but 
if you have the option to upgrade the GPU and the Mac to the top one versus the base one, always go with the base because Capture One will not utilize whatsoever the extra GPU add-on and you're just gonna be pretty much wasting that money. And when it comes to any type of video workflow, Either the Max or the Ultra would be the way to go because of the double encoder decoder engine. Now, when it comes to RAM in the system, 16 gigabytes of memory, I recommend as the minimum, either that or 18 with the current M3 Pro SOCs right now. Optimal will be 32 or 36, or if you really want to go with the Air or just with the regular M3 ship, 24 gigabytes of memory will also do as well, but that's going to be one of those upgrades. You're going to see the most significant improvement. SSD, minimum 512. If you really want my recommendation, I would say upgrade to one terabyte. I've always been able to use that, but not everybody computes the same way I do. Here is a chart with upgrade and performance going from the consumer oriented SOC right there to the more pro as you go in the lineup. Those arrows kind of give you direction. You can follow them around. For example, from an M2, you might not have to go to the M3 Pro or M3 Max. If you go, for example, for the Ultra, even just the M1, that's still gonna make a huge significant difference in your workflow. If you have the M2 Pro, this is probably the only one that you can still go up or go back down to the M1 Ultra, depending on how you wanna look at it, but you're still gonna get good performance. And regardless, interestingly enough, the M3 Max still points up to the M2 Ultra. Yeah, they're really close to each other, but Ultra is still gonna pull ahead in some tasks. Now, wait until the M3 Ultra comes later this year. I think that machine is going to blow everything out of water. Now, anyway, there's a lot of information we cover here. Thank you for staying to the end. If you have, I appreciate you all being here. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell renew, and in art we trust.